five UFC takeaways. Joseph Conroy is here. You can uh, see them. McGregor Trent pissed off fighters. The money fight. Dana climb down question mark. And Khabib will fight. Khabib will fight is definitely something that is uh, we now know to be true. Although there was a, a moment where I was like, this fight might not happen. And then it was like, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to fight. Yeah, it definitely was. And the fact that he's kind of taken on five opponents in the last week and still fought, he seems to be pretty, pretty resilient, pretty game. Uh, so, yeah, it will be interesting. And especially kind of as a style matchup, it's kind of made for him. We've got a, an elite wrestler against an elite striker. So it'd be an interesting one. And I think Hang on, of, you're assuming that the fight with Conor McGregor is going to get made. Well, who knows? We can only speculate at this point. If that fight was going to get made, it will be an interesting style matchup. And I'm sure one that Khabib will be happy to take on. Could we get to the bottom of exactly what happened over the, the rest of the weekend. But Khabib did fight and did win. He fought a guy from Brooklyn who was his fifth opponent over the course of the week. It went the full five rounds? Went the full five rounds. Uh, looked pretty dominant, kind of. Dominating him without kind of without destroying him. Uh, tried to do some more striking, which is kind of something that people have latched onto. Uh, he looked pretty sluggish with that striking, kind of trying to box more. Um, like I said, raised as a wrestler. Um, so yeah, definitely dominant win, but still holds there that um, I'm sure McGregor fans will be looking at if this fight was to come together. Here he is reflecting on the whole saga after his win on Saturday night. I'm inside the bus. Security, don't let me go out. A lot of people inside, you know, like crazy. And uh, and he understand too. It's gonna be like a little bit hard to fight with me when we have a lot of people here. You know, security, media, camera. Like, why you need this? You you wanna show up like something like you can do something with your slap team. You know, if you wanna do something, send me location. Send me where, what time. I'm gonna come. I do this all my life. You know, uh, I'm from Dagestan. You know. Do you think he had any intention to actually fight you on Thursday? Hey, real gangster. Tonight is Yaquinta. You know, this guy real gangster from Brooklyn. This guy take fight, you know, he fight like man. Hey, if you want to fight with me, let me know. Inside the cage, outside the cage, you know, anytime, anywhere. With this chicken, hey, he have to stop eat burgers, like Burger King, and come back, fight here. When you fight here? Last three months, I fight two, twice. I am the UFC lightweight champion right now. And I told you guys before, I'm going to make him humble. Now, I'm going to change this game. Wow. There does see, like, okay, so obviously last week, there was suspicion around this whole facade and thinking to themselves, right, this thing is all created. This is like WWE, which is clearly bullshit. That's not the case at all. And it's kind of gone beyond that to this point where Khabib talks there and, like, I don't know how much like, integrity he's really got, but he seems, like, re in, in true belief of what he's saying there. Like, that isn't kind of big hype man talk, wanting to sell this fight. What he's saying there, he means. Yeah, it's interesting, because, say, Tony Ferguson, who, he, who was the first of his five opponents last week, he said, Tony, get back in the line, join the queue. Not a big draw, not a, not a guy that's going to make you a lot of money. Obviously, and as well, he's been talking a lot about legacy, building legacy, becoming legendary. So fighting someone like Connor, if he's sort of saying he's the mid, he's the Burger King, he's the chicken, uh, that kind of feeds into his own narrative as well. But um, yeah, that was bizarre. I think I remember in like one of the um, SmackDown WWF video games, there was like a back scene area where you could fight. That was yeah, like the image. Game. Yeah, the image of that area was like, yeah, it's just I don't know, what a surreal week. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't think they. You think it was fixed. I don't think it was fixed, but it is straight out of WWE, but just we've kind of gotten to this weird sort of B-movie third <laughs> lines where it's kind of, it's like, oh, we kind of showed up to for a conversation, but then uh, stuff kind of got a bit weird. and Yeah, so that's what happened, right? That's like, yeah, we'll f everything is filmed, everything, but people forgot their lines. It got a bit too violent. Because Khabib makes a good point, like, you know, if you do want to fight, why are you showing up here? We see, I think it's that classic, like, oh, hold me back, hold me back, except kind of the guys weren't really there to hold them back, and they were on the bus that we got here a bit late, um, oh, crap, throw something. Like, I think one of the images that sent out to me is from uh, when the UFC did re release their footage of it. It was like, Connor's kind of already broken a window, and he's sort of running around with this guardrail, being sort of toes, like, he's like, whoa, whoa, chill out, chill out. And he's like, he's just shouting, eh, smash the windows, smash the windows. It's like, yeah. what? It's, I don't know. Uh, immediately afterwards, um, Dana White does this press with a few people, um, uh, ESPN and a couple of other people are, are in the room and it's one of the best pieces of, he's on the phone, he's on the phone to somebody important um, and your man goes, oh, you're, you're uh, hanging up with that guy to talk to us, but this must be important and he sits down and just launches into this. 
uh, you know, I don't know what McGregor's on and what he's doing. This is disgusting. People are, he's going to jail. He's going to jail. He's like, I run this town. You don't really run this town. And at that point, there'd been no warrant for his arrest. He, he did a lot of media for a man who was deeply upset and who runs an organization who has just withstood the worst slight that's ever happened to this organization. I think that's he handled, you do when he you're handled it pretty well. I would say he handled it pretty it, it, well. It is standard that he'd kind of do the coast to coast shows the day before a pay per view. So a lot of them, a lot of kind of his appearances start with like, we know you're here to talk about the fight card, but Dana, last night. <laughs> yeah, I think um, in terms of getting your side of the story out and crisis management, sitting down and going live immediately is like a PR 101. And that, then do it again and again and again. Because everybody immediately assumed that like this wasn't completely fixed and this wasn't a setup. Uh, sorry, everybody didn't immediately assume that. But that, that aspect of the story, that he was very angry with his most important asset, uh, got out there really quickly, and he was relatively convincing in that immediate aftermath. Uh, but there has been a bit of a climb down, so here he is after the Brooklyn show. This is Dana White speaking about what might happen next. And just last thing for me, Dana, uh, real quick, I know it's only been 24 hours since we last talked to you, but any updates at all on the Conor McGregor situation from him? Any change at all in that situation? Is what? Just the situation in general, your relationship, his legal situation. We talked. Any updates? We w talked yesterday. How, how did it go? Yeah, it's good. I mean, there's the, I think that there's a mutual respect between us. And, uh, you know, obviously this week, I, I had so many things thrown at me this week. This, uh, to, 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 fo to focus on the show was insane. We'll get back and we'll focus on Conor McGregor. Right Do now, Dana, right now, Dana, you don't have any firm, you know, plan of attack or of what you're going to do action wise with Conor? No. No, I, I'm, no. But did you have a date in mind for him? Like, you wanted him to fight when? I mean, yeah. Even before all this happened? September. We had talked about him fighting in September. Do you think that's still possible at all? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you can't ask me anything about Connor. I don't know anything about, I don't know anything about Connor. I haven't thought about it. There, there's nothing to think about this week except for this event. So, in a way, right, I can understand that too, because it was one of the biggest clusterfucks in the history of professional sport. This organization, which controls all of its own fighters, couldn't organize a pay-per-view up until 24 hours, less than 24 hours before this giant pay-per-view, for the most eagerly anticipated belt in its history. It's the, it's the Conor McGregor belt, and they couldn't get a fight together for a pay-per-view. I mean, that's ludicrous. And this has also been another difficult year for him so far, coming off of a tough year last year, and it's kind of like he's effectively kind of like, um, he's the president of the organization, but also sort of kind of like the commissioner of the sport, but also completely reliant on the money that these guys can bring in, and the only person who's really making money for him is Connor. So it's not kind of like the Premier League uh, could like ban Cantona or Suarez, and the show goes on next week. If McGregor's gone, the cash cow's gone, the money's gone. Yeah, it's that point about um, the company who came in and paid four billion for UFC, did they buy MySpace? And it's like, well, uh, if you actually suddenly are on the front page of every newspaper and on every rolling sports news bulletin because Conor McGregor throws a thing through the window of a bus, then you're like, that's really bad. What did, how did you do that, Conor? Can you do a bit more of that for us? No, that's really bad and we're going to tell everybody you're really bad, but you're making us all a load of money and you're going to fight Khabib in September and we're all going to get rich. Because you've got this unbelievable money fight now off the back of this, and it's just kind of like, oh, he crossed the line, but God, this, got, really? this, got, this got really messed up. But then also, I suppose, I don't know, like having, uh, we'll, we'll maybe talk about it a bit later on, but like the lacerations over by other fighters, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it, then what is sort of like, does this, is like, does this film kind of end with the sort of Connor gets marred in legal stuff and can't fight for ages and we're all screwed, or is, does it end with the Rocky IV super fight? I think, or like, uh, I'm not sure we've got to play another video, but just before that, I think it ends in a manner where kind of Mayweather versus McGregor ended, where they go on a press tour and it becomes a Khabib versus Conor press tour with Dana White in the middle because he's suddenly in, not inserted himself in the story, he's found himself in the middle of the story and he's looking around thinking, yeah, I'm in dreamland right here. This is amazing. This, this is a three-way press tour before the, the fight of all fights this September. This fight is definitely going to happen this September. There is no question that Dana White will not let this happen unless uh, the court case goes against Conor McGregor, of course, in June. It's the John Kavanagh, um, Drago, Rocky IV reference. So he's calling out Drago, he's calling out Khabib. 
So obviously thinking that maybe there is a fight coming, not a sort of a, oh, I better keep my head down. Um, he was on ban from the Brooklyn Arena. He was on the don't don't let these people in. Yeah, out. yeah. I think he was in Budapest at the time. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Uh, so, <laughs> McGregor fans, though, what did they think about their heroes? Um, whatever it was, well, whatever that was that happened Escapades. at Brooklyn. Yeah. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. That's exactly it. What did they think of his shenanigans? Here they are outside uh, the police station in Brooklyn, where he's being held. Okay, Double champ does what the fuck he wants! Yeah! <laughs> Double champ. To get it right, it's champ champ. Oh, uh, I don't know. He's he's a, he's a champion of nothing there, so got maybe got some reasons to come back, but um yeah, they're they're standing by him anyway. So he said there was a Chucky RL outside uh, either the courthouse or the police station as well. So you know shocking. That's uh, that's uh, I'm absolutely baffled that those two demographics have crossed. <laughs> Uh, so we obviously haven't heard anything from McGregor just yet. The closest we have is this statement from Audi Attar, his manager, which uh, didn't say very much, but did seem to hint that, uh, here you go. So <laughs> on his notes, come on, Audi. So much rumor and misinformation about my client, Conor McGregor. The matter is in the hands of law enforcement. I can't really say more. He's a great father, a fiercely loyal friend. Don't forget that part. That was the one that uh, was ringing the bells for loads of people and one of the best athletes in the world. He looks forward to getting back to fighting as soon as possible. In or outside of the ring, Audi doesn't say. Yeah, and on the misinformation, one of the things that seems to have kind of ticked off McGregor, if he could have got any more angry after what had gone down in Brooklyn, was the fact that Dana White had made comments suggesting that he didn't know if he was on something. Dana was on uh, the Coast to Coast shows the next morning, and they were saying, oh, have you been talking to him? He's like, yeah, I've been texting Connor. He's like, all oh, right, is he sorry? He's like, eh, no, he's actually pretty angry at me. He's uh, angry at some of the things he said. And they're like, oh, presumably you mean the drug stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's pretty angry about that. Right. So, um, and did he say sorry for that on the Coast to Coast shows, Dana White, or did no. he say that I shouldn't have said that sort of stuff, or what was it like? He didn't. He didn't say like, oh, like this is a crazy thing. It seems to be kind of a bit of recognition that like maybe that's something that he doesn't want to be thrown around. Also, possibly not in his. Given that we've covered the vested interest he has in all of this, maybe something that he wants, not something that he wants to be thrown around. Yeah, it seems as if Dana White backed off really quickly from the he's going to be sued within an inch of his life. To yeah, it's good. What? It's good? You went from like, you're going to sue him for everything he has to... Actually, I, I thought about this a little bit. Maybe, is there a possibility that Dana White didn't know what was going to happen, uh, that we have somebody who we know is off the reservation, goes off on a flyer on his own, does this thing, and it's like, then afterwards unveils his master plan. I was like, here, look, that, that piss out fight. You don't even have a fight. You don't even have a fight. I saved you by coming and doing this shit. And, sorry about that. And risking my <laughs> and risking my freedom so that we can all get rich. Is there a possibility that this is all concocted in the brain of uh, just Dana the White shutting down a phone at him? He's like, shh, it's all right, it's all part of the plan. Mm. Yeah, like there, there is definitely an element of that where, like, clearly the, the where we're at now, this was not how it was supposed to end. Well, it, did you did you have any interest in it? Could be McGregor fight, really, up until this point? Yes, now, yes. Like, did, like, I, I, think, you, I think most people did. To be fair, like I, I, I don't know. know. You were set up for like, the fact that that was a fight well, that we all wanted to see. It, it was like the biggest fight, but at the same time, it wasn't like be. yeah, like who cares? It's yeah, like, now it's a like, whole different thing. I think, if it so, can I think it's, this is like gone from. I think this has gone from people who are into the UFC. This suddenly has crossover slash. Kaching appeal, and that's the whole it was, point. It was this. really interesting. After the um, kind of the last, like we people thought that the um, monster can throwing incident was crazy, but um, it's actually a bit. I was catching up on the notorious documentary um, the other week, and there's a bit kind of when he's in the bus afterwards, this time with John Kavanagh, and everyone's a bit like, uh, "Connor, are you all right there?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. The illusion of madness is over." He's kind of going a bit Hamlet on it, so like right. maybe this is kind of the same playbook. Just this is kind of like version two point oh. So maybe the illusion of madness is over now, and he's gonna. Put in some hard, some hard yards. Uh, go try in the snow or something. He looked pretty fit, though. He did look like he wasn't a million miles away from being ready to fight. But he yeah. did training. Yeah, it looks in shape. He's been posting on his across the social media accounts his training. Uh, so pissed off fighters. Obviously, they, there's collateral damage in all this. A bunch of people who ended up getting injured and couldn't fight, and the cards getting pulled, and uh, Artem Lobov's opponent obviously didn't get to fight. Niall McGrath, se severe MMA, and of course, uh, off the ball has been talking to Ashley Evan Smith, who did fight and win at UFC 223. I'm a female, and there were females on the bus, but regardless of gender, 
the thing that really gets uh, me very, very upset is the uh, the Mike Chisea, Chisea, I was say his name wrong, and, you know, the Ray Borg thing where these fighters were injured to the point where, number one, their paydays were taken away. Uh, you know, they didn't get to fight. They had to cut all their weight for no fucking reason. That's the biggest thing. You know, man, woman, it doesn't matter. I know Rose got um, emotionally affected and, and, and Car- Carolina, Carolina was on the, on the bus too, but when you physically hurt a fighter dear lord like that is just so fucked up so i think fuck that guy conor mcgregor for for doing that you know that's the worst if you startle somebody okay big fucking deal we're, we're a bunch of fighters like that's you know we're tough but at the end of the day like he injured people he hurt people he took paydays away he took dreams away you know cutting weight families flying out here to see them people paying money you know some people don't have that money but they want to see their their son their nephew their whatever you know their boyfriend fight so bad that they scrape that money up and they come out and that's what ticks me the fuck off and i can't believe that happened so i'm disgusted by it i think he's a, a very selfish individual just to say the least and, and i hope he pays for it you know i don't know if that means uh fine yeah, what, what what does that mean um that's not for me to say you know i'm not the ufc and i'm not the law i, I love the sport and, and i am a fighter myself so it's so it would it's so hard for me to say uh banned but at least if these these guys are getting four year bans for you know whatever the hell they're eating these kind of this tainted meat or whatever the hell it is at least give this motherfucker a four year band you know like at the same time i'm sure he'll go and, and do some boxing and do whatever the fuck he can because he's conor mcgregor but at least a four year ban for this the shenanigans that he pulled so at least he can think twice because like you said bellator now ufc the motherfucker thinks he's invincible oh what happened to bellator Uh, that was the one in Dublin when he hopped into oh, the, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Hopped into I cage. That, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, Jesus, uh, I, I can't keep up with my Conor McGregor shenanigans. Uh, so that was Ashley Evan Smith, uh, pretty eloquent. Um, should have warned you about the F-bombs there in case you had any kids in the car. But anyway, uh, so also Irish Joe Duffy, um, who, <laughs> not to talk to Joe Joe Duffy, but the Joe Duffy fighter who has beaten Conor McGregor in the past. Conor McGregor was also talking to him about the bus attack and uh, he was pretty strong too. Have a listen. Um, I think, uh, I think obviously it's, it's still yet to come, obviously, uh, with the whole court situation and everything, nobody knows, uh, where that's going to lie. I don't know how that'll affect visas and so on and everything else, or, or just the outcome of the, of the whole thing. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of nice to be getting away from it now and just obviously the fights are done and obviously the concentration being on the results and the fights themselves. Um, you know, that for the incident itself, obviously it's not a good look for the sport, especially, I think, back home in Ireland. Obviously, there's been a lot of battles, um, you know, with the government, with a lot of the mainstream accepting the sport. How much do you think it's going to be? Do you think this will be a further damaging element to the sport? I think it might be, actually. Um, you know, obviously, with the difficulties we had obviously this puts a, a bad spotlight on on the sport so touch wood it doesn't it doesn't set us back too far and uh and obviously they just see it as a separate incident and 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 something that was you know very out of the out of the nature of the general mma community it always seems to be connor involved in these incidents though it's um it's a worrying trend i think uh i think it's more worrying that it is kind of escalating um from the the bottles and the cans with the Diaz thing to the to the thing in um uh, Bellator with the with the refs and uh, and Mark Goddard and so on and then obviously the escalation with uh, with this so i think that's the more the worry in trend but at the same time maybe maybe this could be the the thing that just says right i need to need to get my head down i need to sort myself out and just concentrate in the fight and then you know get away from all the all the madness like Well, uh, now the madness is the thing that makes him rich. That's it. Like, yeah. so we're all obviously, um, you know, part of the feeding frenzy around this. But it, I mean, it's hard not to be. That's it. Like, and it is. It's just like, kind of this film that's like playing out in front of us, and sort of, yeah, it's this kind of. We obviously have this trend of behavior going on, and there's kind of just kind of been this theory that like, after the Mayweather fight, it's kind of like, what can kind of motivate Conor to get out of bed? What's the next sort of mountain to climb? Uh, Now he's lost his two belts, you know, he's got this this fight, which would have been a big fight, is now a massive, 
massive fight if the Habib fight does come together. It has to, right? Like, has to. It, uh, it's now reached the point where people will pay for it. Unless there's some pesky like legal issues or like Duffy mentioned there, possible visa implications or... Have it in Russia, you know. Like UFC want a big fight in Russia, have it in Russia. You get paid extra money off books to have it in Russia, suddenly, you know. The only thing is, has Conor McGregor screwed up his victimization complex that maybe he wanted going into this fight, you know? Maybe his plan all along was that I will be seen as the guy who was wrongly stripped of two titles. I was the champ champ, now I'm the nothing, nothing. I'm just too, I've got nothing around my waist right now. These people are going to feel sorry for me. Wait, here's a hand truck, let me throw it at a bus. Oh no, I've lost all public sympathy and therefore affects his own arc. Like after he lost to Diaz, there was natural sympathy for Conor McGregor. People saw a humble side to Conor McGregor and they couldn't wait for the comeback fight. They couldn't wait for revenge for Conor McGregor. Now has he just lost that sympathy and that angle that he wanted on this fight has just diminished. Of but course there's people out there who's like, he's the most loyal friend ever and I need him in my friend circle who will always stand by him. But I mean, to, to you and I, a bit like, I'll admit, I felt a little bit of happiness when McGregor came back and got his win after losing to Diaz for sure. Yeah, well, there's there's going to be the I've been stretched my two belts narrative. There's going to be the I'm loyal to my camp, blah 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 narrative. There's also could be a potential issue if he does get you know sued to the extent that Dana White is suggesting that he is going to get sued for this. There could also be a new financial impetus to you know get the four ounce gloves on. So you just pay there. all the fighters their lost fees, and you say, look, I'll make sure you're on my next card, and everybody goes, okay. Is, right? Is there, <laughs> and it's like but, a million and a half, whatever. Is that and crossing? Goes, yeah. Is that kind of cross if? So, yeah, if they decide, right, we, we don't want to take as much legal action as we, or be as hard on them legally as we could be, and we're not going to suspend them, and we're going to make this massive fight, it's possibly Madison Square Garden in uh, November. Yeah. I mean, wh so what, who loses in that? Apart from, like, society and all of us for watching it. But we're all losing right now by... Uh, talking well, about it, yeah, but ultimately they don't see any of that and they don't give a shit about that. Yeah, so. and everyone's going to watch, so... Yeah. Um, remember, New York only legalised UFC about a wet week ago, right? Yeah, this yeah. It wasn't legal. In, and and I, I bet you a bunch of people are saying why. New York Daily News, Dana White says Conor McGregor incident isn't so bad, claiming there's a lot worse that goes on in all the other sports. Classic whataboutery. There's, I wonder if there's a chance here that Dana White goes full Vince McMahon and becomes fully partisan in favour of Khabib and goes to Conor McGregor, right, I'm suing you one and a half million dollars. If you lose the fight, you pay me one and a half million dollars. If you win the fight, I pay you three million dollars. Doubles are quits. Double, doubles are quits. 150 slash 300 is more I mean, like 50 and 30. Whatever right? it is. The gold suitcase above the, yeah. above the octagon. <laughs> You've got to knock Khabib out and then climb the ladder and grab the gold suitcase. And all the actual cash is in there. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, he may as well sign Ronda Rousey back up for a comeback fight on the, on the same night. Uh, Apparently she was amazing at uh, WrestleMania. It was WrestleMania, was it? Yeah, she won. That's all I know. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> on that note. On that note. But um, yeah, be interesting. Just one nugget is um, if, if Russia was an option, if, if they are in problem with um, a lot of commissions in the US, they have said, the UFC have said that their first Russian card won't be with Habib, so they're going to be kind of like a dry run, which would probably be a lower profile card. So. Yeah, but maybe uh, they did also say McGregor would never fight Mayweather, and then they were like, oh, you've got a, you've got a Brink Salad truck of cash to back up to our offices that you're going to tip in. Thanks very much, we'll do that. They should just go full on cutscenes now in the UFC. It's like, uh, in between fights, it's just like a cool kind of camera angle backstage, people like having covert conversations about who they're going to beat up and uh, stuff like that. And you know, they may as well just take the next step is all I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's not a million miles from it anyway. So I'm, I, I for one, I'm looking forward to this fight in a way that I actually wasn't really in, that engaged with. I mean, well, obviously, job done. Yeah. And I, I'm sure that everybody's disgusted by that, but like, Go for the soul. It's Not really. the fight game. I mean, it's the fight game. It's the fight game. People will watch.